So next, we will talk about the a priori algorithm that tries to limit the needs for man memory. And this algorithm is probably the most cited in the data mining field. And as a recap on the computational model, note that in practice, the association rule algorithms reads the data in passes. So all baskets are read in turn. We will first read the first basket, and second, and so et cetera, et cetera. And the algorithm may read the data from multiple passes. Therefore, the true cost of mining the massive data that's on the disk is usually the number of disk IOs. Therefore, we will measure the cost by the number of passes an algorithm makes over the data. And the a priori algorithm is a two-pass approach that limits the use and needs for man memory. And the key idea is monotonicity. And it's actually a very simple but clever idea. And it states that if a set of items i appear at least s times, so does every subset j of i. And basically, that means that if the support of i is at least s, then so is the support of the subset j of i. And the subset's support can only be larger than, than s. And in practice, we usually use a counterpositive version of this for the pairs. And it states that if the item does not appear in S baskets, then no pair, including I, can appear in S basket. And, and it basically translates to if the item I has support lower than S, then any pair, including I, has support lower than S. So how does the a priori algorithm find the frequent pairs? It goes like this. In the first pass, it will read the baskets and count in memory the occurrences of each individual items. And note that this would require only the memory proportional to the number of items. So it is very cheap compared to the original naive algorithm, which takes about the square of the number of items. And the items that appear more than S times are called the frequent items. And in the second pass, we will read the baskets again and count in memory only those pair where both elements are frequent. So basically, if you have, let's say, for example, N frequent items, you only need to, uh, you only need N square memory. And this proportional to the square of the number of frequent items as opposed to the square of the number of total items. And this is in addition to uh, the cost of maintaining a list of frequent items so that it will know what must be counted. And you can see that this actually dramatically cuts down the memory cost because let's say that only half the items are frequent then the memory cost that you need it would be just a quarter of the original cost. And this picture illustrates the usage of memory in both passes. Let's say the green, the green block is actually all the memory that's available to you. And in the first pass, it will count, the, count each individual items and basically maintain a table here. And in the second pass, you will only keep the frequent items, so it's actually smaller than this one, and then you will count all the pairs of frequent items, and you will maintain another table here. And these are called the candidate pairs. Now that we know how to count and discover frequent pairs, but how about frequent triples or even item sets of size larger than three? In general, for each k, we need to construct two sets of k tuples, and that's item sets of size k. And the first set would be c k, and these are called candidate k tuples, and those are the item sets that might be frequent item sets. That is item set the support larger than s. And how do we construct this c k? We construct this c k based on the information from the past 
for k minus one. For example, we will construct C2 based on the information from, from the previous pass where we get the frequent individual items. And the second set we need to maintain is LK, which is the set of truly frequent K tuples. So at a high level, the whole process goes like this. We start from a list of all items, which is C1, and these are individual items, and we will count the items, and we will prune it and, in, and keep only the frequent items, which is L1. And from L1, we will construct all pairs of frequent items. And this is C2. And among the C2, we will count all these candidate pairs and we will prune the non-frequent one and keep only the frequent pairs. And that is L2. And from L2, we will do similar stuff. We will just uh, construct a item sets, basically construct candidate item sets of size three. And this is C3. Let's talk about it in the real example. And we can see that we can start from C1, which are those individual items. And we will count the support of item sets in C1 and prune the non-frequent one and keep only the frequent individual items. And this is L1. And until now, we have B, C, J, and M. And from this, we will generate basically four square Ball square that's basically um, 16 pairs, and we may further prune it. That we will generate C2, which is the candidate pairs, and this will include BC, BJ, etc., etc. And then we will count the support of each item set in C2, and we'll again prune the non frequent ones and get L2. We can see that right now at L2, we have only four frequent item pairs left. And from this, we will generate C3, which is the candidate triples. And here we have three, oh sorry, four candidate triples. And if you're more careful, you can find that in this BNJ, although the BN actually is inside the frequent pair set, but MJ is not. That means the BMJ will never have a support higher than the threshold. That means if you are aiming at optimizing this candidate generation process, we can actually prune this set beforehand. But regardless, you will, you will still need to count the support of each item set in C3 and we'll prune the non-frequent ones and keep only the frequent triples, and that is B, C, and M. As a summary, you can see that we will need one pass for each K, where K is the item, item set size. And so we will need the room in a memory to count each candidate K tuple. We'll need the room to count the individual items, we'll need a room to count each candidate pairs, we'll need a room to count each candidate triples, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. You might be worried at this point that what if the k becomes too large? But actually, things are usually better than this because, as we mentioned before, the support for item set actually drops dramatically as the size increases. So, for typical market basic data and reasonable support. Um, K equals to two usually requires the most memory. And until now we have discussed the um, basic version of a priori algorithm. There are also many possible extensions. For example, you might be interested in association rules with constraints. For example, you might be only interested in men over 65 who have two cars and that will limit dramatically the candidate item sets that you have to deal with. And another example is that you might be only interested in association rules when the items are in the taxonomy. For example, we have two association rules. One is from bread and butter to apple jam and strawberry jam. And the other is bread and butter to fruit jam. 
and you can see that this fruit jam is actually including apple jam and strawberry jam. And the third extension can be that you can also choose to dynamically lower the support as, as the item set gets bigger. 